Hey, good morning. It's 5 a.m. Master Scrum. It is 6.30 on, say Thursday, Ed? Yeah. Thursday. Anyway, sorry I'm a little bit late. I had a coaching session late night last night. Didn't get done until about 11.15 uh, p.m. And then I was up to about a little bit past midnight and then tried to get up. Didn't work. Anyway, it's 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. We're here to talk about Agile and Scrum in a tactical and practical way so you can get home to your family and friends, have some fun, bring value to the customer, not work too many hours so you get a, a crazy stressful workplace, balance that work and life, and have some fun. So just going to talk about one thing today. I think I got it. I wrote it down, and I, I don't know if we'll talk about another. There's a lot of little things bouncing around, going around, yeah. uh, thought process here. But today, I just want to talk about control and what you don't control. And it was yeah. okay. I got to do the show, Ed. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to do all that stuff. Oh, we're going to do all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so get the little roller, just measuring stuff. Might talk about it. I don't know. I think I might say that for later. But I had um, a couple people lately is, is one of the things I noticed in a couple of people I was coaching is this um, desire for control or over over achievement. Um, two different ways of looking at it. One was where the Scrum Master was really hopeful for the team to really achieve a high level of achievement in their sprint a lot of velocity points stories getting done and everything but the problem was their system went down too much and they couldn't do their final testing and and their and and the scrum master was like i was hoping we could do a lot better than we did before because there's a big push in organizations to improve the velocity and get more work out as you mature right and that happens but one of the things i've always done in my career um pretty much my whole life I always figured something was going to go wrong. <laughs> it's so by always anticipating, not necessarily solving, but understanding something's always going to go wrong. When it does, it doesn't impact you as much. And sure, you're a little bit disappointed and everything, but it's not. So, but what I had the conversation, which is what I wanted to talk about today, was when. You have to understand there's some things you have control over and some things you don't. And when I coach people, I coach them about, so what have you done? And I ask them powerful questions and go through the process. And when you've done or you could not have done anything to fix that problem, it's totally out of your control, can't do nothing. And you real once you realize that, the stress off you goes away. And that's a hard thing to do. It's It takes a little practice to understand it because – like me, I make lots of mistakes in my life. I've seen enough that I get it. I get over it a little quicker. Um, not to say I don't like get disappointed on it. But what I try to give them emphasis, okay, let's let's look on the bright side. If you had the system up and running and didn't have all these outside forces totally taking down your system and everything was good, would you achieve that higher velocity? He's like, yeah. Well, then you did good. Right. Your team got a lot of work out there. You just couldn't do the final testing part because someone took down the server <laughs> for two days. What are you going to do? There's nothing you could do. Right. But you as a team. Did well. Right. My only question would be, and we'll talk about that is like, well, if from a technical practical standpoint, I'm like, OK, so the server's back up. You can get the stuff done in like the first two days of your next sprint He's like, yeah. Or they're like, yeah, we could do that. Then, you know, no big deal. It's it's not like you're bringing in the whole 50 points worth of work in the next sprint. But what I wanted him to understand and his team is that they did a really good job. They would have been there. They But something, it's like racing NASCAR. And you're in third place and you're doing great. And then the person in the front just has an axe and just takes you out. You could have done well. I mean, you should be proud that you did that well. It's just something happened that prevented you from finishing the race. But there's nothing you could have done about it. And you're safe and sound. Everybody's healthy, hopefully. And you just you just move on. So 
I just wanted to share that with you from a scrum master team management perspective and positivity. Think of the positive sides. So you couldn't get it all done. Did you stretch the limits? Did it look like you were on a good track? Was it something that you couldn't have done? And then you can sort of retroing it. Um, are there alternate paths to demo the work, right? If this happens again, which probably will, what do we what do we do alternates? So it's just a positive reinforcement to the team and yourself that they you did a good job. Now the bean counters out there may not understand, but I'm just going to tell you you did a good job, right? Uh, I'll work on the bean counters and what they're looking at because I had other people come back, ask some other questions, but uh, but then but then there's a there's a kicker, right? Control measurement, right? Let's say that work you didn't do, you put in the next sprint and you give yourself the five, 10 points worth of credit in the next sprint um, for the work you did. Your average velocity is now at, not like like 20% higher than normal. So then the next sprint, you do 20% higher. Please don't do that. Some people might say, well, you, you normally do 25 points. And because you, you would have, you know, that other 10 points was R. So we got, you know, the 30 plus another 10, which 40. So from now on, you should be able to do 40 points of sprint. You got to make sure people don't do that and, 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 and do funky math. Um, but otherwise, great job, right? Think positive. Think positive. Don't think, oh, we failed. We're never going to make it. See, you did really good. It's just something out of your control. Maybe I repeated that a few times today. So, that's pretty much the, the topic I wanted to talk about today. Um, from another point of view in the control world, you know, everybody has work coming to them, right? Sometimes you can't control it and you just have to have flexibility and to take this, take advantage of stuff that comes in to service it, right? And we build Scrum in a way that if your CEO comes in and says, I need you to do this project next sprint, and you got to bump a couple stories off your, your backlog, that you have room to put it in. And we're going to do a TikTok on that later um, for a show. One last thing. We're going to call it early today. Um, there's a lot of companies out there, and maybe we'll still talk more on this virtual stuff. I know I've been out there saying it for a while. Um that are doing work from home. Companies aren't allowing their people to go to training sessions and things like that. Some may even allow them going to work. Who knows? But I uh, hope you all stay safe. You know, and uh, find ways to work in a way and share. But even if you're not in the office, there's a way for you to communicate and work as a team. We're reverting back to the old individual Stove pipe mentality, waterfall, working environment. Please don't revert. <laughs> uh, find a way to work as, in the team as much as possible. I know a lot of the distributed teams, they're already there. So that's a great thing. So with that, be healthy. Enjoy the weekend. I'm definitely going out this weekend to do some stuff and try to support the local economy and going out. Because one of the things they talk about is having healthy lungs. So you need to get out of the house. They say having a tight humidity, cold environment's bad. So you want to walk around and get warm, stay warm, and we'll do well. Take care. Ring the little bell if you're interested in getting updates. Hopefully you are. And uh, share wherever you can. And with that, you have a great day. Enjoy. It's Thursday, one more day. Tomorrow is Fortune Cookie Friday. So we'll do the fortune cookie, share that, and we'll have some fun. And I don't have to go to school. And Eddie doesn't have to go to school because they're cleaning his school. Go figure. Um, yeah. Hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. All right. Take care. Bye. Happy scrumming. See ya.